Hello, everybody. I know, I know, I haven't been on here in a while. Um, stuff's been going on. I'm continuing to try and upload, I think I'm on like the 8th or ninth attempt now, of the AFC West and South video. And for some reason, YouTube doesn't want to allow me to put it on here. So I put that on my Facebook page. If you go to Facebook, it's a group, uh, Three Eyes Blind. Uh, you'll be able to find it there. Most of the time, I will not post stuff really to the Facebook page. I post discussions, uh, polls from time to time. During the season, if there's like a short bit of news, instead of making a whole video on here that's a whole two minutes, I'll put it on Facebook instead because it's two minutes. Um, stuff like that. Most of the time, I will do it through this this uh, medium. You'll see me do videos through YouTube. However, from time to time, you will see me use the Facebook page. So please feel free to go to that uh, and engage in conversations with myself and also to see other news and things that I might post on there. So, bit of news. Uh, it is finally official. Julio Jones is no longer a member of the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta traded Julio to the Tennessee Titans, and the Tennessee Titans gave up a fourth rounder that's conditional next year and a second rounder. The fourth rounder that's conditional, so it's believed that that will be a compensation pick. If it's compensatory, they will get the compensatory pick. If it's not compensatory, then they'll get their fourth round, whatever it is that they land, uh, Tennessee lands in the fourth round. So there's that. Uh, so look out for Tennessee this coming year. They'll have obviously a really good run game with Derrick Henry, as well as now two legitimate weapons at receiver. Uh, let me see. Here we are. The Eagles made some news. Uh, they have cut Jamie Newman, Trevon Grimes, and Khalil Tate. Uh, Jamie Newman getting cut is not that surprising. He's not that good. I didn't understand why he decided to come out. That happens, it seems to be, every year. There's somebody who goes, I'm going to the draft. And you just look at their stats and you wonder why. Especially in his case where he played mediocre talent. At Wake Forest, he finally goes to a school where you could see if he's talented or not, and he sat out, and then he's like, I'll go to the draft. I don't know. I don't get it. Uh, Grimes was a bit of a surprise. Uh, didn't expect them to get rid of him, but, I mean, whatever they want to do is whatever they want to do. And then Khalil Tate wasn't that stunning. Uh, I think last I'd heard he was playing slot receiver slash H-back. Uh, I apologize for the noise you hear. That is a fan. It is extremely hot where I live. It's muggy. Very humid. I think my phone said it's 88, real fuel 90 something. Let me look real quick. Yeah, sure. Um, let me look. <clears throat> yeah, it's 86, real fuel 97. So it's, uh, it's a little warm where I am. Okay. Uh, today we're going to be doing the AFC North and the AFC East. Be covering what they did in the draft and their undrafted free agents. Uh, so first is the AFC East or North, sorry. And their first few picks were Come on. It's being a little slow. Give me a second. It's because it's trying to load the video that's on here, and I hate that there's a video on here at all. But that's the NFL for you. 
That's where I'm getting my information for the draft picks. I am on NFL's actual website. And yes, you'll notice by the changed logo, uh, it is Pride Month, and yeah, I'm not going to change it. You don't like it? Too bad. <clears throat> All right, so we'll start with Baltimore Ravens there first. One, two, three, four. The first four picks, because they didn't have a second-round pick. They had two first-rounders and two third-rounders. Was Rashad Bateman, wide receiver from Minnesota. Uh, Jason Owe, edge from Penn State. Ben Cleveland, guard from Georgia, and Brandon Stevens, corner from Southern Methodist. So let's talk about that for a second. Um, first is Rashad Bateman. I really like Rashad Bateman. He is a really good receiver, uh, especially since that's a really big issue with Baltimore is that they don't have any receivers, so that obviously huge pickup for them. Uh, Jason Owe. So the big knock on Jason Owe was he had zero sacks last year. Um, now, obviously, that is a alarming statistic, but when you look into it, he may have not had a lot of sacks, but he had plenty of pressures. So I'll take the good with the bad there, and pressures are just fine. Uh, guard Ben Cleveland. I disagree with that wholeheartedly. He will not be a guard. He should be a center. And then Brandon Stevens, corner from Southern Methodist. Um... So Brennan Stevens, I think, is just a really good depth piece for your team. I know people are going to laugh and they go, you picked a guy in the third round for depth. Well, what I saw on his tape, I saw that he was a reliable corner, but I, I think compared to somebody else that they got, cough, cough, uh, that he probably won't play a whole lot. I think Brandon Stevens, they need him for the boundary in case something goes wrong currently. Uh, based on what I know about their roster, I thought they were set, but apparently they needed another guy. Uh, round four, pick number 26, 131st overall. They took Tylen Wallace, wide receiver, Oklahoma State. Again, they desperately needed wide receivers. They went and got another very talented kid out of Oklahoma State. Round 5, pick 16, 160th overall. They took Sean Wade, corner from Ohio State. I really love this pick for several reasons. One being that Sean Wade is a really, really talented corner. Two, I think this is one of the perfect places for him to land because he doesn't have to play the boundary corner. You can stick him in the slot where I think he plays much better and teach him the boundary while he's playing the middle of the field. Round 5, pick 27, they took Dalen Hayes, edge, Notre Dame. Uh, Dalen Hayes is a very good edge player. Last year he got significantly injured, and this year he came through and played extremely well. Uh, not a big sack guy, very, very good in the run defense. Uh, the big thing for them getting Dalen is, I think, this. He is an excellent leader and he is a very good football player. Two things that you you know, you know can't always find in the draft. And then their last pick, which was pick 40 in the fifth round, was Ben Mason, fullback, Michigan. Uh, I can't think of the kid's name off the top of my head, but a couple of years ago they had a fullback who played D-tackle as well. He played both sides. Now, do I think that's what they're going to do with Ben Mason? I don't think so, but Ben Mason did play a little bit of linebacker when he was at Michigan, so if they feel the need to kick him over, they can. Uh, the big thing with Ben Mason is he's really tall. He's like 6'4 or 6'5, uh, and he's just a big target, and he can catch. I've seen tape of him catching the ball uh, at almost like a t slot tight end type uh, play. So you know that you do end up getting a pretty decent target there for uh, Lamar, as well as a very good, very solid blocker. Oh, there we go. All right, AFC North Baltimore. They're undrafted free agents. They got Ardarius Washington, safety from Texas Christian, Sam Cooper, guard from Merrimack, tight end Tony Pouillon, Virginia, Offensive tackle Adrian Ely from Oklahoma. 
Xavier Kelly from Arkansas. He's a defensive tackle. And Foster Serrell, offensive tackle from Stanford. Uh, my favorite pick from this would be probably Adrian Ely. I, I really like what Ely does. He's a very good blocker from Oklahoma. And I think that he can fill out at the right tackle spot, which is obviously the position they lost. So I think that that, that creates, uh, really fills the hole that you had. All right, next would be the Bengals. Bengals, 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 Bengals. Cincinnati. <laughs> All right. Wait for the page to load. Hang on. Okay. The Bengals. Their first three selections were Jamar Chase, wide receiver, LSU, Jackson Carmen, guard, Clemson, and Joseph Osai, edge, Texas. So let's go through these first three picks real quick here. Uh, Chase, I really like Jamar Chase. He's a very solid receiver, very fast, and he has really good hands. So, And, of course, he'll be reuniting with his quarterback at the time in Joe Burrow. Jackson Carmen, I'm not as high on Jackson Carmen as everybody else, but you do get a very solid guard. Needs a little work, but you can totally, I think he'll totally be fine. He could fill out pretty well at that guard position. Uh, Joseph Osai, edge from Texas. I really like uh, Osai. What he lacks in production, he makes up for in effort and skill. What do I mean by that? There are plays where he doesn't get to the running back or doesn't get to the quarterback, but you see the effort and you see that he is battling to get in position, something that I think should be uh, valued more, that, hey, even if you don't get to the running back or you don't get to the quarterback, that I see that you're not just giving up. You're actually forcing the uh, – the guard, tackle, or in his case, from time to time, tight end, to actually have to block you and to have to put in effort. And, of course, edge rush and just pass rush in general for the Bengals last season was abysmal. Uh, round four, pick six, they took Cameron Sample, edge from Tulane. Again, you can never have too many edge guys, although I think they went a little overboard. You'll see what I mean here in a second. Okay, I'm pretty sure I told you to go away. But no, I'm going to stick it down here. All right, uh, round four, pick 17, they took Tyler Shelvin, defensive tackle from LSU. Uh, I really like Tyler Shelvin. He's got a great push-pull, and he eats blocks, something that you're desperately going to need, especially if you're going to invest so much at the edge position. Uh, round four, pick 34, they took Deontay Smith, offensive tackle from Eastern Carolina. Round five, pick five, they took Evan McPherson, kicker from Florida. Round six, they took Trey Hill, center, Georgia. And round six, pick 18, they took Chris Evans, running back from Michigan. Round seven, pick seven, their last pick, they took Wyatt Hubert, defensive end, Kansas State. Curious which one of these guys they're going to kick to linebacker, because I know that's how their defense works. All right, uh, they're undrafted free agents. The Bengals picked up Pro Wells, tight end from TCU, running back Puka Williams Jr. from Kansas, quarterback Colin Hill from South Carolina, Antonio Phillips, corner from Ball State, Darius Hodge, defensive end from Marshall, and punter Drew Chrisman from The Ohio State University. I'm actually pretty high on the Drew Chrisman pickup. He is a solid punter. And from time to time, your team needs a punter. So, can't be too upset about that. All right, next would be the Browns, I believe. Yep, right there. Mm. 
Okay, the Browns, first three picks. In round one, they took Greg Newsom. Round two, they took Jeremiah Awusu Koromoa. Round three, they took Anthony Schwartz. So, Greg Newsom, the second, is a really solid corner. I had him, I think, ranked as my fourth corner in the draft. And he's just a really good prospect. No arguments on getting him here. In round two, they got what is absolutely the steal of the entire draft. And they got Jeremiah Awusu Karamoa, linebacker from Notre Dame. He is the best linebacker in the class. And it's not close. I know people are going to go, the kid from Tulane. He, he had a really good year and really good tape. Jeremiah Wusu koromoa has great tape for the last couple of years, and he won the Butkus Award, which is the best linebacker in the country. So, yeah, much better. And then they took Anthony Schwartz, wide receiver from Auburn. Uh, the big thing with Anthony Schwartz is this. He is really fast. Something that you do want when it comes to... Uh, the receiver position, you do want a guy that's fast, but in his case, he has legitimate track speed, and it's it's uh, lightning quick. I uh, watched a little bit of tape of him just running, not at a track meet, just running in general, like a non-time forty, him just taking off, and it's it's scary. I expect bubble screens, uh, reverses, sweeps. And probably, I mean, are they going to throw deep to him? I would. But I expect him to get a lot of snaps in this offense. Round four, pick five, they took James Hudson, offensive tackle, Cincinnati. I actually really like this pick. Uh, Hudson is an underrated tackle. I think I had him at, like, seventh. I had Leatherwood ahead of him. But I thought with... in. Round four, That's that was a great pick. Round four, pick 27, they took Tommy Tojiai, defensive tackle, Ohio State. Round five, pick nine, they took Tony Fields the second. That was a weird pick that I have some questions on. Uh, Tony Fields is not your prototypical linebacker, and he's a little short. He's a bit undersized, so I, I have some questions there. My big th- thing, uh, the big thing I think they, ugh, if I could speak, the big thing for this team is, and why I thought they drafted him, is simply this. He has great potential. And it's one of those where, hey, we could skip on this guy and lose, or we can take him, have him on our practice squad, teach him up, get him to be you know, this great linebacker, and now, oh my goodness, we have a great linebacker that's on our team. Maybe a little raw right now, but I I think he has the traits and the ability to become a a really good linebacker. Round 5, pick 25, they took Richard LeCount III, safety from Georgia. My big thing with Richard LeCount is I like him mostly in coverage. Run stuffing, he's fine, but he's excellent in coverage. And then round six, uh, pick number 27, they took Demetric Felton, wide receiver, UCLA. Demetric Felton is a running back, wide receiver, return specialist. Essentially, think of him like you would Cordero Patterson. That is my comp for him, is he's Cordero Patterson. He does a little bit of everything, and I thought that that was a great pick for them because he's such a Swiss Army knife and that you can stick him pretty much anywhere and just let him go. So, very happy with that that choice. Their undrafted free agents were Marvin Wilson, defensive tackle from Florida State, running back Trey Harbinson from Charlotte, Manny Bergamba. It's the first time I've read that name. Uh, From Miami of Ohio, and defensive end Romeo McKnight from Illinois State. Uh, going to go with Marvin Wilson on that one as my favorite pickup. Marvin Wilson had a up-and-down year this season, 
but I think overall he has again same same thing with that I would say about uh, Tony Fields, which is sure he he had a meh season, but the potential is there, and he's had seasons and ga- multiple games where you just went, oh my goodness, look out for this guy. And this year he only had really like one game where I can say you had that, oh my goodness, don't run in the middle. So that that would be my big thing with, with, with them is that it's not that the team's bad. It's just that he, he had kind of a eh year. But I love that they got him. Dealers, okay. I had a brain fart. I'm like, the next team would be in my brain was like the Colts. And I'm like, nope, it's not the Colts. It's the Steelers. As soon as I can find them. There we go. Sorry, my, my foot hurts. Actually, it's pretty much my entire lower lower halves of my legs. I uh, pulled a muscle uh, two, three days ago, and it's still a little sore. So if you see me grimace or anything, it's because I'm trying to stretch it while I'm sitting here. It's still relatively painful. Not a lot. Like, I can walk around no problem. It's just every once in a while when I'm trying to stretch it, it, it still, you know, is sore. All right. <clears throat> Steelers. Their first three picks were Najee Harris, Pat Fryermuth, and Kendrick Green. So, Najee Harris running back from Alabama. I do and don't like this pick. Why? Uh, plus side, you get a running back, something that they desperately needed problem, you kind of took him a little early. They wasn't going to be on the board when he came back around. I will give you that much credit. He was definitely going to be gone by the time they picked again in the second round. By pick number 55, yeah, he's not going to be sitting there. But I still, I don't know. It's, it's one of those where you looked at their team and said, you need a guard, a center, and a tackle. Uh, I can't remember who it was that said it. I want to say it was Daniel Jeremiah put it perfectly during the draft. And he said, okay, this is going to be one of those shining moments. Are you going to create the run game by fixing your offensive line and then taking a good prospect late? Or are you going to fix the run game by getting a huge running back and then fixing the line later? They, of course, went with the uh, the latter option, and they decided that they're going to build with the running back first. And so they got Najee Harris. I, I think that it was a good pick. I just, you know, I, I debate whether or not that was the right way to go. Time only tell. <clears throat> the next pick was Pat Fryermuth, tight end, Penn State. I really like this pick. He actually reminds me of a different tight end they had from also Penn State. It kind of reminds me of Jesse James. A really good blocker who is also good with the 50-50 ball. When you put the ball up and just tell him to go get it, he can. Uh, someone tried to compare him to Heath Miller. I don't believe that at all. Heath Miller was a freak. Uh, Vance McDonald might be a better comp, if you will, for how Pat Fryermuth plays. But I, I like the pick. You needed a tight end. You got a really good one. Round three, pick 24, they took Kendrick Green, guard from Illinois. So this pick I was actually on the fence about. Originally, he was listed as a tackle. And when I pulled up Kendrick Green and watched some tape on him, my problem was is so he's got good athleticism, but he's little. 
He's not very big. And I'm like, at, at tight end, or a tight end, at tackle, you're going to struggle. There, there is a height expectation for certain spots. And if you're sub 6'3", tackle, you might struggle. There's a good chance because your arms aren't going to be long enough. And when I watched Kendrick Green's tape, I saw that his arms weren't long enough. They move him inside to guard. I think that's a much better spot. Doesn't need to have the longest arms. You're going to be battling a little more uh, one-on-one with a guy. And he can use that athletic ability to get up and push a little more. So I don't mind this pick. I like it a lot. Round four, they took Dan Moore Jr., offensive tackle from Texas A&M. Again, you needed a guard, a tackle, and a center. You killed two of those problems right off the bat. Uh, round four, they took Buddy Johnson, linebacker from Texas A&M. Uh, you lost a really good pass rusher. you got to find a way to replace him. You also, I believe they lost a linebacker at one point. So you got to replace that position as well. Not not in love with the pick of Buddy Johnson, but hey, you got to replace the things you lose, and you did. This pick, on the other hand, I do like quite a bit, and that's Isaiah Loudermilk, defensive end from Wisconsin. Uh, you lost, I can't think of his name now. Uh, I think he went to Tennessee, actually. Uh, the kid from Kentucky. I can't think of his name now. Uh, and you have to replace it. And so I think you replaced it actually two ways. One, with Isaiah Loudermilk, and two, with the pick they took next, which is Quincy Roche in round six. Another prospect I'm actually pretty high on. I think that both these guys could battle and actually can never have too many defensive ends, especially when you're a system like the Steelers who like to rotate their edges a lot. In round seven, they took Trey Norwood, corner from Oklahoma. A lot of people were on the fence about this pick. I'm not really sure why. I love Trey Norwood. He is a really stout corner, and you desperately need help at the corner position, so that's a great pick in my opinion. In your last pick, they took Presley Harvin the third punter from Georgia Tech. All right, they're undrafted free agents. They picked up corner Shakir Brown, Michigan State. Lamont Wade, safety from Penn State. Jamar Watson, linebacker from Kentucky. Linebacker Calvin Bundage from Oklahoma State. Isaiah McCoy, wide receiver from Kentucky State. Mark Gilbert, corner from Duke. Rico Busey Jr. from Hawaii, he's a wide receiver. And Donathan Steiner, safety from Florida. Uh, Personally, I'm going to go with Shakir Brown on this pick uh, for who I like of those undrafted guys. Uh, I I thought about going with Wade from Penn State, but I'm going to stick with Shakir Brown. I think he could be a really good slot corner. And he's not bad in run defense. Needs a little work, but he's not bad. All right, now we're going to the AFC North. Or East, sorry, the East. That was the North. I always get these two backwards, and I don't know why. Ow. Okay. Okay, so the AFC East, starting with the Buffalo Bills. Their first three picks were round one, Gregory Rousseau, round two, Boogie Basham, and round three, Spencer Brown. So, uh, the first two picks address a huge need for this team, which was when they got to the playoffs, they couldn't rush the quarterback at all. So what did they do? They got Gregory Rousseau, defensive end from Miami. 
and Boogie Basham, defensive end from Wake Forest, two guys who can get to the quarterback. In the case of Gregory Rousseau, he did it quite a lot at Miami. Uh, in the third round, they went and got Spencer Brown, offensive tackle from Northern Iowa. Now, I know a lot of people who were kind of not so sure about this pick because he's from Northern Iowa. I got to watch a bit of tape on Northern Iowa, not a lot. And I thought Spencer Brown was a really good pick. Uh, he's raw and he needs help, but he's got the potential to be a pretty good tackle. In round five, they took Tommy Doyle, offensive tackle from Miami of Ohio. Um, not real sure why they decided to take another tackle. I know that they do need some help on the offensive line, but I don't know if he'll remain at tackle. Don't be stunned if they kick him inside the guard. Round six, they took Marquis Stevenson, wide receiver from Houston. Round six, pick 28, the next pick they had in that round. They took DeMar Hamlin, safety from Pittsburgh. Round six, pick twenty-nine. They took Rashad, or sorry, Rashad. Rashad, sorry. If I could read, Wild Goose, corner from Wisconsin, and then in round seven, they took Jack Anderson, guard from Texas Tech. Uh, of those last picks, Wild Goose is probably my favorite. Kid's aggressive, needs a little work on pass defense. Not that he's not good at it. It's just that there have been guys who could blow past him. Needs to, to understand that you can't let guys just blow by you. So a little bit of tweaking. But overall, really like Wild Goose. Also, that's a hilarious name. Kind of surprised that uh, the Raiders didn't take him since that seems to be the only thing that you need in order to get drafted by the Raiders is an interesting name. Uh, they're undrafted free agents. The Bills picked up Tariq Thomas, safety from San Diego State. Cyrus Tuitule, offensive tackle from Fresno State. Wide receiver Trey Walker from San Jose State. Nick McLeod, corner from Notre Dame. Tight end Quentin Morris from Bowling Green. And Elijah Griffin, corner from USC. So I actually have two picks for this one that I really like. Elijah Griffin... And Nick McLeod. Big shocker there, I know. The reason I like Nick McLeod so much is so he had a good year with Notre Dame. Uh, not a lot of interceptions, per se, but he had a lot of pass defense, which is just as valuable. But the big thing is, is so before coming into th this uh, this draft, I was like, eh, Nick McLeod will probably go seventh round if he gets drafted at all. Uh might get moved to safety, mainly wanted for his vision, not not that fast. And then he ran like 4-3 something at his for his 40 time. At which point he called me out because I said, "Sweet Jesus, where was this?" And he said, "Rewatch the tape." So I did. I'm not making this up. This was a real interaction between the two of us. Uh, it was on Twitter. Kind of cool moment, and I was humbled for a while. Because when I flipped on the tape, I didn't see 4-3. I saw 4-5, 4-4, four, 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 maybe a high 4-4, four, four, but not 4-3. And then I can't remember the game. It might have been North Carolina. Uh, one of the guys, I can't remember who he was covering now. I've watched so much, so many other games because I just love football, and at this point there's nothing on. So I watch, I've been watching games from like 2014. Uh, I think it might have been uh, who got drafted slot receiver from North Carolina. Anyway, uh, tried to blow past him, and we know that he can run. I think he ran like 4-4, four, four, like high 4-4, four, four, or low 4-4, four, four, like 4-2 four, something. And uh, he was able to stay with him stride for stride, and actually near the end of the play ran past him as a corner. So I got to see it. I believe him 100%. I'm very interested to see how he does in coverage. Uh, with Elijah Griffin, I really like how he has, uh, again, same same thing with McLeod. I like his vision. He does a really good job of finding the ball. 
playing the ball, he also does quite well. So I'm, I'm excited for both of these guys to hopefully get their chance and to play for quite a while in the NFL. All right, who did I say is in this one? This is the one I always get backwards. Dolphins, Jets, and... Okay. That's right, this is the one of the Patriots. I always forget where they are. Of course, for the first time in my lifetime, they're actually in a competitive. I think next would be the... Oh, no, that's right. It's not... Ah. So it would be New England, New York, and Miami. Miami's first. Alphabetical order, it takes me a second, because I'm not used to looking for alphabetical order. I'm used to looking for the teams in the division. My brain doesn't go, the Miami Dolphins. My brain goes, the Dolphins. <laughs> Same thing with, like, Detroit. Well, the Lions. My brain goes to the Lions, not necessarily. They're from Detroit. Uh, with the NFC North, it's a little easier because I live here. Uh, so, knowing where those teams are is a little easier. But, like, for example, I still call... Uh, the Raiders, I've, I've been caught on three different occasions by friends of mine who've made fun of me because I've called them the Oakland Raiders, the Los Angeles Raiders, and uh, I think another time I called them, I think I just called them the Raiders, and they're like, yeah, where are they located? And I was like, ah, California somewhere. Nope. They moved to Vegas. But my brain doesn't go the Las Vegas Raiders. My brain goes the Raiders. Otherwise known as the laughing stock of the NFL. The place where careers go to die. Cleveland can be called that also, but they're at least turning it around slowly. All right, so Miami. The Dolphins in their first one, two. Oh, actually, they had multiple selections, so we'll do their first three. So two first-rounders and a second-rounder. They picked Jalen Waddell, Jalen Phillips, and Javon Holland. So let's talk about this for a second. Uh, their first pick, Jalen Waddell, I, I understand why you made this selection. You got the fastest receiver probably. Well, I don't know. I, I, I'd have to look at, now that I say that, I don't know, Darden might be faster. Fastest Division One. We'll put it that way. Fastest Division One uh, receiver from a bigger school, uh, Jalen Waddle. He does a lot of things really well. He's obviously a really good at, at running by everybody. He's good at kick return. My biggest concern for him is he's really little. That's that is my number one concern. He is not a big guy, and I'm afraid that he's going to get banged up real easily. Uh, their next pick, which is also in the first round, is the 18th overall. They took Jalen Phillips, Edge, Miami. Uh, really like this pick. Jalen Phillips, my, my only concern about him is he dealt with concussions. And those are a real, real big red flag. But when you look at his play at Miami, if he can find a way to not get any more concussions... This could be a really valuable pick. Round two, pick four, they took Javon Holland, safety from Oregon. Uh, that actually is an underrated pick. Javon Holland is a really good safety. Round two, pick ten, they took Liam Eichenberg, offensive tackle, Notre Dame. I love this pick. Liam Eichenberg is an amazing tackle. And I love that they decided to go get him. Round three, pick 18. They took Hunter Long, tight end, Boston College. I actually like this pick. Hunter Long is a really good receiving threat. He also has a pretty good job of blocking. Again, he needs a... If I would argue any red flags on him, it would be probably blocking. Needs a little bit of work, but again, a great choice. 
Their next two picks were in the seventh round. They took Lennar Coleman. Or, sorry, Larnell. Larnell Coleman from Massachusetts. And I'm hoping I'm pronouncing this right. Jared Dokes, running back from Cincinnati. The undrafted free agents. Miami only picked up two. They picked up offensive lineman Rob Jones from Middle Tennessee State and defensive tackle Jerome, uh, Jerome Johnson from Indiana. Now we move on to the New England Patriots, and as much as I don't like the Patriots, the greatest head coach in NFL probably ever, Bill Belichick. Uh, as much as I don't like Brady, you got to give respect to Belichick. Brady, me. And I know I'm going to upset a lot of people with that. I just don't like him. I don't like what he... What he certain things that he stands for. I don't like that he gets all this credit, yet if you watch the games where he's, you know, the big wins, he didn't do that much. The defense is what got you there. The only, so so the big one is obviously the Super Bowls. Everyone likes to do the whole, oh, no Super Bowls. Uh, well, when you look at those Super Bowls, you need to understand something. Most of those wins, he did just enough to make it. And the defense helped him out immensely. Uh, same thing with this most recent win. Yeah, sure, did he put up quite a few points? Yeah, but you know what? I could stick. Uh, who's that quarterback that has, on every possession, thrown an interception? Uh, Nathan Peterman. I can stick Nathan Peterman back there with that offensive line and those receivers and blow you out by 50 points. Why? Because you have infinite weapons, a good offensive line, and a solid running back. Problem solved. The big one with that, I thought, was the defense. The defense got you more possessions and kept the other team off, in this case, Kansas City, off the board. So see, that's a prime example of where I go, you want to give him all this credit, but realistically, it was the team that was around him, not him. Uh, the only game where I can genuinely say, you know what, it, it was you, is the Atlanta game where they played the Super Bowl, where you rallied your team to win. Otherwise, me. But other than that, let's get to their draft picks. Their first three picks were Mac Jones, Christian Barmore, and Ronnie Perkins. So Mac Jones, uh, the most overrated quarterback in the – well, actually, no, he's not. He is the second most overrated quarterback in the entire draft. Uh, Mac Jones is a meh athlete. He has a meh arm, and I, I don't like him. Uh, wish him luck, but I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, if you look at the last 15 years, name one quarterback that's come out of Alabama that's done anything. A.J. McCarron. And A.J. McCarron almost won the only game that mattered, and that was that playoff game he played against the Steelers. And if it weren't for Vontaze Perfect being the dirtiest player on the earth, you know what, I'd give it to you and not bring this up. But where's A.J. McCarron now? He's been a career backup. Which is what's happened to every Alabama quarterback for the last 15 years, if not longer. So, me. Uh, the next pick was Christian Barmore, defensive tackle, Alabama. Although I think Christian Barmore is talented, same thing. Um, look, there are games where he disappears. I feel like I said that about somebody else a couple years ago, and he's nowhere to be found now. He got cut. I can't remember the name of that guy off the top of my head either. Same thing. Uh, draft an analysts were, oh, my God, so great. Blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, give it four years. He'll be gone. It's been three. He's already gone. Can't think of who the hell. I can't think of his name right now. He got drafted by, like, the Raiders. Gone. Got cut. 
Nobody wants him because he doesn't do anything. But, you know, uh, maybe Barmore can surprise me. The next pick was Ronnie Perkins. That pick I like. Ronnie Perkins is actually a really good edge. Uh, Oklahoma had a really solid edge rush and really good pass rush uh, overall. And I think Ronnie Perkins is an underrated pick. Uh, Round four, they put Ramondre Stevenson. I actually really like this pick also. Ramondre Stevenson reminds me a bit of... uh, James White. He's not as fast as James White, but he reminds me of that Swiss Army Knife type guy where he can catch the ball and run it. A little more of a power back compared to James White, but love the pick. Great choice. Uh, Round five, they took... Cameron McGrone, round six, they took Joshua Bledsoe, safety from Missouri. Uh, sorry, Cameron McGrone's a linebacker from Michigan. Round six, they took Will Sherman, defensive tackle, or offensive tackle, sorry, from Colorado. And then round seven, they took Trey Nixon, wide receiver from University of Central Florida. Their undrafted free agents is going to be the easiest list of all, and that is they didn't take anybody. Now, I say that, but let me go ahead and respond with this. They kind of got an undrafted free agent, in a way. The guy was actually drafted originally. don't know who drafted him off the top of my head. I think think it was like Denver. I think Denver might have drafted him. Uh, That is that they're getting... um, Ah, shoot. No, I can't think of his name. It's the guy from Stanford. Uh... Tyler Gaffney. Yeah, who originally drafted him? Panthers. Panthers are the ones who drafted him. Okay. Sorry. Uh, but, yeah, they, they signed Tyler Gaffney. So you kind of got an undrafted free agent, sort of. Uh Gaffney was basically run CMC before run CMC, if you will. Although I'm pretty sure Gaffney's taller than uh, run CMC. Let me look that up a second. How tall is Chris McCaffrey? He's like 5'10", right? 5'11". So, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, because uh, Gaffney's like 6'1", six, six 6'0", six something like that. So, yeah, he's bigger than Christian McCaffrey, but same, similar uh, skill type. All right, now we go to the Jets. So their first pick was the second overall pick, and they took Zach Wilson, quarterback from Brigham Young. Their next pick was the 14th pick in the first round. They took Elijah Vera Tucker, guard USC. Their next pick in the second round, they took Elijah Moore, wide receiver Mississippi. Let's break that down real quick. So Elijah Moore, fastest and one of the fastest receivers in the entire draft. Dude has amazing hands. Love, love, love that pick. Elijah Vera Tucker. Now, I actually hoped that Minnesota would take him, but they traded back. They didn't end up screwing this up. They actually ended up getting a great player regardless. But the big thing with Vera Tucker is I like that he can play tackle or guard. They have him listed at guard. Uh, So I think that's a great idea. Stick him in your offensive line. They desperately need help. And then their first pick was Zach Wilson. Uh, So Zach Wilson, I was... In agreement with with the, with the scouts or draft experts or whatever you want to call them, uh, that his stock went up because of last year. My big question on Zach Wilson is: last year he got to play a lot, and last year he showed sparks of really good talent, and he showed that he is mobile. 
and that he has a strong arm. But, and this is my big question mark, uh, two years before that, he was hurt with pretty significant injuries, and he missed significant time. So my question is, okay, are you made of glass, and the second that I hit you, you're done? Because if so, then that means that you'll ba you basically have Jimmy Garoppolo 2.0 with Zach Wilson. Uh, round four, pick two, they took Michael Carter, running back from North Carolina. Round five, they took Jamie, Jamie and Sherwood, safety from Auburn. Ready for some confusion? In round five, pick ten, they took Michael Carter the second, corner out of Duke. It's almost like they may have made that mistake, right? They're like, wait, Michael Carter? I thought we drafted him. Quick, grab him. And they're like, oh, different guy. It's kind of like Lamar Jackson and Lamar Jackson. I was hoping that someone in their division would take Lamar Jackson. Who am I referring to? There was a corner who played for, I believe he played for Nebraska, named Lamar Jackson. And I was like, please, Cincinnati or somebody, draft Lamar Jackson so that I can finally say Lamar Jackson was intercepted by Lamar Jackson. Because I thought it'd be funny. Anyway, uh, round five, pick 31, they took Jason Pinnock, cornerback from Pittsburgh. Round six, pick two, this guy's name's a nightmare. They took Hass Hassa. Na I believe it's Nazar Ladeen. If I'm mispronouncing his name, I apologize, but it's a nightmare. Uh, safety from Florida State. In round six, they took Brandon Eccles, corner from Kentucky. And their last pick, they took Jonathan Marshall, defensive tackle from Arkansas. Undrafted free agents. Sorry, again. Uh, they picked Kenny Yaboa, tight end from Ole Miss. Hamilcar Rashid Jr., edge from Oregon State. Tenton Seltz, Seltz, offensive tackle, New Mexico, and Grant Hermans, offensive lineman from Purdue. Uh, obviously, my favorite pick of that is Yaboa. Uh, Kenny Yaboa is a elite threat at tight end. Blocking, not so much. He's not really your prototypical tight end that's going to block. Uh, he's more of the vertical threat, run downfield, catch the ball. Uh, like a receiver. I guess my biggest comp for that would be if you took a shorter Jimmy Graham. Because he's not Jimmy Graham's height. But, actually, how tall is Yaboa? I want to say he's 6'4". It's like 6'3", 6'4". Like, yeah, he's 6'4". So I would, that, that would be my, my comp, if you would would be, think of more along the lines of Jimmy Graham. You're not going to use him to block. You're going to use him because you're a freak athlete and you can catch the ball. Of course, Jimmy Graham doesn't catch the ball. He drops everything that's thrown at him. Nor does he block, which is why I question his value for any team. Uh, in the case of Yaboa, he obviously can catch. Uh, blocking, it's not that he can't block. It's just that it's not necessarily his forte. You can teach him that, though. Uh, yeah, so I think the Jets are actually in a good place, not to mention their free agent signings, which I went over already at one point. Uh, but yeah, that does it for this, and that is the entire draft and free agents. Been fun, hasn't it? Uh, of course, preseason will be starting, I think, in two months. Yeah, it's usually like the third week of August. Somewhere in there. And there's only going to be three preseason games this year, I believe. To be honest with you, I think they could make it with two. But that's because if, if I was running anything, my, my thing would be we're going to do two preseason games and none of my stars are going to play. Because you're not getting injured. Let's put the rookies in. Let's put the one-year guys, backups, everybody, you play. But that'd be my, my thought. Uh, that does it for this episode. Uh, again, please feel free to subscribe, uh, join the Facebook page, and keep coming here because I am always going to have 
something to say, I'm sure. Yeah, that does it. Bye.